Today we are at the conclusion of two years of inspirational effort to lay the foundation for a better future for people living with rare diseases in Europe. To bring together all stakeholders in this foresight study would not have been possible without the initiative of the Parliament and its key members that we heard today, Mrs. Frederick Rees and Mr. Christian Boussoy, as well as with the support of the EU Commission. We at Eurodis are proud to have been chosen as the lead of this project. The policy recommendations that we will discuss today result from hundreds of hours of consultation and co-production. We thank the hundreds of experts and thousands of people living with a rare disease who have contributed their expertise and experience. When we started, the world and our lives were different. The COVID-19 crisis has had a deep impact on all of us, and not least the rare disease community. Healthcare systems on the brink of collapse have led to delays in diagnosis and treatment with severe consequences for many people living with a rare disease. But the European response to the COVID health emergency also showed our ability to mobilize amazing resources and skill. The development of vaccines in less than a year is a triumph of science. It has though gone mostly unnoticed that the design of RNA vaccines owes a lot to innovation in gene editing, techniques that are being developed and refined, e.g. with the aim to find cures for rare diseases. Thus vindicating the words of British physician and anat anatomist William Harvey, who almost 400 years ago insisted on the study of rare diseases to achieve new insights in medicine. He wrote, nor is there any better way to advance the proper practice of medicine than by the careful investigation of cases of rarer forms of disease. Today, we as rare disease patients feel as entitled to benefit from the fruits of medical progress as anyone else. We must learn from the coordination, cooperation and streamlining procedures, which have reduced delays in access to treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. Suddenly, smart ways to speed up access could be adopted and implemented in very little time. No doubt about the urgency, but for the rare disease community, the urgency is no different. We should just live an everyday emergency, silently but no less painful. We have come a long way since the Council recommendation of 2009 with infrastructures and technologies we could only dream of 12 years ago. But it is imperative to address the remaining unmet needs of the 30 million people living with a rare disease in Europe. The diagnostic journey is often far too long. Only a fraction of rare diseases have treatments and being included in our societies and economies is an unrealized right for far too many living with a rare disease. The recommendation from the RARE 2030 foresight study should therefore be translated into a new policy framework, solidly integrated and sustained by the EU and its member states. We must re-incentivize the European strategy for rare diseases with measurable objectives for these unmet needs. We must renew our strategy in order to make equal access to health a priority and a distinct value of Europe. We must coordinate across research, digital, healthcare and social welfare to harvest the synergies of European collaboration. If we do so, the lessons taken from the COVID-19 crisis, combined with the recommendations of this foresight study, will be seen as having provided important guidance for the coming years towards a Europe for health. Thank you.